this is a follow-up to our to our lecture today just kind of run over it real quick and then talk about some things we didn't have time for in class and a little bit about the assignment that I gave you we just did an overview of wind power we took a look at the uh, the wind map for the US where the best areas for wind are we had some interesting discussions about politics and uh, the bottom line is that uh, Iowa is the leader in per capita wind energy production and we're uh, uh, doing pretty well compared to the other states especially Nebraska who uh, may may come up out of the weeds here pretty soon there they've taken some steps that that should help in that direction but we'll see this spring what, what kind of movement there is then we took a look at the uh, wind speeds in within Iowa and saw that there's places where there's better wind than, uh, than other places. We talked some about the politics, the different competing interests, the coal uh, lobby and the environmentalists and, uh, and so forth. And then we went through some of the skills and things that you should know as a turbine technician. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the climb, what it's like some of the safety equipment, looked at the components of a typical wind turbine. This is an example, I believe this is a General Electric turbine, and uh, went through the part that each of those major components plays. Uh, this is a different, uh, different version of the same thing. Uh, we didn't really talk about what happens down tower at the base. There's a conversion process that uh, that takes place. So we'll we'll get into that later. Then we looked at some pictures uh, from inside the uh, from an actual turbine. Talked about torquing bolts. A uh, little bit about the the hub and the base of the tower. Some of the equipment that's located down there. And then couple shots of the guys working over uh, near Walnut on some of the turbines. Talked about safety. And I know I mentioned with, uh, with the uh, Council Bluffs group, I don't know if I mentioned with Clorinda that this guy is definitely tied off while he's out here working. Although falling would still be a painful proposition. Uh, safety first. And then this is a, a blade inspection that's going on using a using a crane. And and while I'm thinking of it, I'll uh, I'll run you off to a quick link here. I went through uh, train the trainer training for. Uh, working at height, safety training, with uh, with these guys in Reno, Nevada, and uh, they they also do work, rope access work, and it, and it looked to me like it'd be a pretty pretty interesting thing to do if you have a uh, a fondness for working in high places, and uh, getting banged up and bruised up, and you know the money money could be pretty good, but uh, they do offer courses to get certification and rope access training. And rope access training, instead of uh, having a crane, you know, instead of having to bring one of these massive cranes in and then hang a bucket and have somebody go out there, you would have uh, rope access technicians go and, uh, and hang from ropes and do the blade inspection that way. It'd be uh, a lot cheaper and it would be a lot less, uh, less trouble. And it looks, it looks like it'd be a very exciting occupation, but uh, I just thought I'd mention that. So other things that we didn't get to that I wanted to discuss. Uh, one of the things that I, wanna, I want you guys to get in the habit of doing is keeping in touch with what's going on in the news. Because you'll hear about uh, projects that are being planned and, and other interesting things. So there's, there's different places you can... <clears throat> 
you can go for news, of course, but Google is a good place to start. Along the top, you should have some links. Just click on the news link. And I usually just do a quick and dirty search for wind. Search news. And today's news is full of interesting uh, information. You, you probably heard about the Pickens plan. If you didn't, I'll, I'll give you a quick brief on it. Uh, T. Boone Pickens, who is a, a guy that made his money in the oil industry, was campaigning for, uh, his plan was to replace the natural gas that's being, replace the energy that's being produced by natural gas in some power plants with wind energy, and then use the natural gas that would have otherwise been used in power generation to power automobiles which means cars would have to be converted, retrofitted, or new, new ones would have to be manufactured to, uh, to burn natural gas, which isn't a, a real impossible thing to do. But then you'd also have to have a, a delivery infrastructure. You'd have to have uh, gas stations converted to use natural gas. Uh, but his, uh, his plan was pretty ambitious, and uh, it was also responsible for some of the growth in the wind industry although it never really got got up to where it uh, but take a look at that get a little uh, little background on that and we can talk about it <clears throat> I also mentioned with both groups the uh, the fact that we don't have any um, offshore wind energy in this country yet and uh, this is another story there's 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 one you'll probably see one just about every day that uh, coast off Massachusetts may uh, so yeah it's been nine years they've been working on this to get uh, to get turbines out there and the main objection is that it's gonna it's gonna mess up the landscape or I should say the seascape you're not going to be able to have that nice ocean view but, uh, so that's an interesting uh, from the political standpoint uh, here's another school that's installing a wind generator and they're going to get uh, all their energy from, from wind power. A lot of schools are doing that. We're considering it still. It's a pretty expensive proposition, and you have to have the correct, uh, you, know, you have to have enough wind to justify it. Ah, we've talked about Nebraska and about how uh, their politicians are, are gearing up and this is uh, this is interesting. It's a story from the Los Angeles Times about Nebraska. So I don't recall seeing this in the local news. Of course, I haven't looked at the paper today yet. But uh... hmm. so this this could result in Nebraska getting some big projects going over there. <clears throat> Yeah, power companies from around the country are, are, are pursuing this. Here's an interesting story about a Florida power company. And I believe uh, there's a Florida power company that has some turbine, uh, some wind farms here in, in Iowa. So uh, they're developing a substantial farm in, in Montana. Here's one we talked about the environmental concerns where uh, developers and, and often I, you know this is this is you know a personal speculation so take it for what it's worth but I, I, I have a tendency to think that the groups with political power that are that are opposed to wind energy are uh, encouraging this sort of uh, delay these delaying tactics so yeah, they have to study bat and bird mortality for three years after it's constructed. And then if, if it looks like there's a lot of birds or bats being killed, they have to have money set aside to, to take, the, take the project apart, which would probably be almost as expensive as building it in the first place. Hmm. 
Britain. Uh, we mentioned before that uh, Europe is way ahead of us on this. The United Kingdom is doing some uh, some big offshore wind projects. So that's in the news. See the uh, project in Scotland. Uh, this article, I think, has to do with small wind. We'll talk about small wind turbines. These would be found on an acreage or uh, on a farm to generate power just for a, a group of buildings or one building. You'll, you'll see some of these. Uh, we had a guy come and demonstrate one of these turbines last year and, or last semester. We'll, we may see if we can get him to come again. And we were considering putting some up here on campus. We have to look at the at the cost and if it uh, if it works out. So that's just an example. Uh, that was that was a couple pages of stories, and and you can see most of them were fairly new. So not a day goes by that you're not going to see something in the news dealing with wind energy. So back at uh, back at sale. I learned a little shortcut yesterday that I shared with some of you. It seemed that it was taking a while to move between different courses when you were logged into SAIL. So uh, if you go over here and you pull down this uh, arrow next to your name, it lists all the courses you're enrolled in. Clicking on these rather than going back to the home page and then clicking on the course seems to be a little bit faster. So if I go to the uh, Intro to Wind Energy, I go to Lessons. That seems to move a little quicker than it uh, than it was before. So that was a little tip that the guy in charge of sale shared with me yesterday afternoon. Under web resources, I added uh, well just as a review the American Wind Energy Association. And if you want to open these without all the extra junk, you can right click and do Open a New Window, and then remember to say No. And then you don't have all that extra stuff taking up space in the window. It'll work either way. Uh, I wanted you to go here and explore a few things. Hmm, this might be something that I want to go to. Wind power. I'll have to uh, put that on my calendar. This is a pretty good size report, and uh, you might want to take a look at it when you get a few minutes. This 20% uh, by 2030 means that they want to uh, increase the amount of wind energy that goes to our total energy usage to that amount to 20% in the year 2030. And this was really a report prepared by the uh, Department of Energy. So it's, uh, it's a substantial report. <clears throat> but there's, there's a huge amount of good information in here, fact sheets. And, and I already mentioned the uh, Career Center, which is a good place to start to take a look at some of the jobs that are out there. And as I've mentioned more than once, your your uh, your ability and willingness to relocate will greatly enhance the chances that you uh, of, of getting a, a good position. So there's that, and then the Danish Wind Energy Association site, which is a huge. Uh, huge amount of information in there. We'll be referring to this off and on throughout the class. Uh, 
So we'll take a look at that. I get some use out of it. I put I put a new link up here from uh, since since uh, our last class. I put a link uh, to the Iowa Energy Center to their wind page. Gives you some information about wind in Iowa. And it actually has a. Uh, A little calculator thing. If you wanted to, if you're thinking, if you were thinking, if you had a, a piece of property you were considering putting up a wind turbine for your own use to power your home, you could, uh, you know, click on uh, click on your county, select the community you live in, uh, and. Uh, they even have, you can put the type of turbine in there. This is just a way to kind of calculate if, it, if it's practical, if it makes sense. But there's some other good, uh, good information here. Iowa's done a good job in making wind energy very attractive from an investment standpoint, which helps to explain why they have the uh, highest per capita installed capacity in the country. And then lastly, I wanted to talk a little bit about the assignment I put up. It's in the assignments folder under lessons. Find a source of information about the history of wind energy. Summarize the, uh, your findings in a, in a page or less. Or if you want to use a couple of PowerPoint slides uh, or some other creative method, that's fine. Go ahead and email it to me. I might share it with other students too. So, uh, so keep that in mind. And there is a lot of information about the history. You know, Wikipedia is probably the first place a lot of people go. You can do a, uh, a Google search on, I don't know, history of wind. That Danish wind energy site might even have something, but it might take a little bit of uh, work to get to. The site has is, is, uh, got so much information on it, it's almost overwhelming. But uh, Wind energy goes back a long way. You, know, you could take it all, way, all the way back to ancient times, and some of the guys last semester did. Uh, I'm really just looking for kind of a, you know, a chance for you guys you know, to get out there and maybe learn something. Uh, hopefully you'll find out something that you didn't know before, and that's the whole goal of your experience here. Okay, so that's the... Uh, that's kind of a little summary of what we did today. A couple of things that I wasn't able to get to. Uh, I want you to start thinking about uh, what you would need to know if you were going to go out, what you would want to know if you were going to go out and work on a turbine. So, All right, a good place to stop.